All right, gentlemen, what's happening, guys? Good to see you guys. Uh, good to see you guys here virtually. Some of my best friends in the world. How is, uh, how's everybody doing? Quarantine 2020, bud. <laughs> Same as everyone else, man. Zoomathon 2020. So, um, hey, just wanted to get, uh, wanted to get us together. Um, we're doing this for uh, M Side Strong uh, this week uh, at Morningside. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, all of your place in, in the history of Morningside basketball, we're doing a Morningside challenge uh, through this. And uh, all of you guys hold a pretty important piece to where Morningside is today. You know, I mean, Roush, you're the 2014, excuse me, 2014, I wish, 2004 male athlete of the year at Morningside. Um, you know, Brad, all-time leading scorer. Uh, McGill, you'd have been, you know, top 25 in a number of categories uh, when you graduated. Uh, Coop, you know, team captain, uh, when you would have graduated, games played, start, you know, games started, um, you know, a whole host of, uh, um, accolades there as well. So, so Roush and Coop, you two played on the, um, one of, you know, what arguably one of Morningside's best, uh, teams at the division two level. Um, and, uh, and were able to be part, you know, part of a game, uh, against the Jamal Tinsley led Iowa state, uh, Iowa state team. Uh, to which uh, Morningside took Iowa State to uh, to overtime. And that was kind of the beginning of your your careers. What's uh, what was that like, man? What was it like to be a Division two team going into uh, Hilton and and taking them to the brink? Get to start. You get to start. <laughs> well, the game looked fantastic from the bench. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the quality of play was tremendous. Um, it, it was it was really fun. I mean, I. I, I can't speak to uh, the playing in it, but uh, I can certainly speak to the watching it. And it was, uh, you know, we were just draining threes. That was really fun to watch. It was, I think it might have been one of the first games of the season. Could you correct me if I'm wrong? But yeah, it feels like it was really it was, early on. Yeah. I think, I think we went in 1 0. 1 0. Yeah. And then, and then to, you know, see this, these guys that had just, I, you know, got to the, it might have, might have been the Sweet 16, could have been deeper than that the year before. And um, they're really fast and really athletic. And it was impressive to watch um, the team really compete hard against them and just drill threes. And, you know, I think it played into, you know, everybody wants to go play college basketball to play college basketball, but everybody has, you know, the Division One dream of being able to play in a facility like Hilton Coliseum and, you know, kind of funny story uh, coming out of the, the, the tunnel, um, you know, into a facility. It's a little bit different than running out of that tunnel. It is Alley Gym, right? And, uh, you know, running out, we weren't really accustomed to ever having a ball boy. And uh, you get a ball boy when, mm -hmm. uh, when you're at Hilton Coliseum. And I can remember running out of the tunnel and the lights being really bright and the ball boy thrown in, the, the, not expecting it, uh, and the ball crashed me right in the face. Um, and, uh, the next thing uh, I looked at was an ESPN camera, uh, at center court there. So immediately went through my mind, my first experience being on ESPN was a ball being thrown in my face by a ball boy. So really good representation of, uh, for, for Morningside. You know, the, the this whole, uh, this whole conversation is kind of leaning towards a, a, a 2004 conference championship, which I think was, uh, in my opinion, was really continue to catapult Morningside bas men's basketball into a, you know, a different stratosphere. Um, so I had the, uh, kind of had the girls go around, uh, just around the horn. It's like, think of one, one, one takeaway that you've had from any team being on the team or just one of the, you know, a singular memory or moment to kind of elaborate on, you know, some of the, it was submitted for the, for the video. You know, Brad did say that I said the um, Philadelphia independent uh, national tournament probably was something that, that, uh, I take away as uh, uh, an incredible time, but also, I mean, obviously it was awesome to, uh, to be able to compete in that, uh, um, in that arena, if you will. There's some stories that will probably, they'll probably stay off this particular Zoom meeting, but, you know, traveling with both the men's and women's team to Philadelphia, being downtown Philadelphia, seeing the Liberty Bell, eating, eating Philly, Philly cheesesteaks, right? Hanging out in the hotels, doing all of those things. And playing fairly well, I mean, we played a NIAC team that was really good from New York. Brad, of course, had another massive game against those guys. Um, hit some really big sh shots down the stretch. Um, you know, played that team from Philadelphia in the semifinals. Um, but uh, just really for me, you know, the, the, the takeaway always from, um, from th those teams is really just the memories um, off the court as well. Because, you know, ultimately, the, the, 
and Brad, you can say this as a coach, but you know, the memories that you have playing in each individual season, only, only you experience those together, whether it's an 04 conference title or the o going to 06 national tournament team, that particular group of 15 only experiences that way. The coach's experience different, your family's experience different, but you know, we as, as, as players have played together only, you know, experience it all uh, together and have those memories. And that kind of just gives you like that very unique bond, especially when you're really close. What are some, you know, what's a memory or two that each one of you have um, looking back? Well, I guess I can start, uh, you know, I don't, I think probably, you know, I have one of the most unique experiences that maybe, and, you know, I don't know if I want to go as far as say to any Morningside basketball player, but somebody alluded to, we didn't know who was going to be coach. I think that, honestly, I went through five coaches, uh, five head coaches in my time. And now being around the game of basketball, having been a coach, have, have my own teams, I know how hard that was now uh, for, for me and for, for my teammates. You know, and one thing is as, you know, we transitioned from NCAA Division II to NAIA, um, that was a tough year, man. I mean, we went to battle with um, – but we, you know, we never gave up. We battled, you know, and, and going into and, and getting guys like Brad and, 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 and Paul and some of the other guys in as recruits, I just remember thinking to myself, I hope that I have enough leadership ability in me that I can give these guys something to have success, you know, when we're gone, essentially. And you know, it would have been very easy for me having to go through, you know, all of us, Roush, you included, going through that transition and going through those hardships to almost be a little bit jealous of those guys. You know, they have a stable, uh, a stable coach. They got that, you know, awesome group of freshmen that they're going to be there all four years. You know, I had to play with almost different players almost every single year of college and have to get used to like a new group of guys. And, and the only thing that I can remember you know, instead of that jealousy leaving was how happy I was for you guys and being able to follow you guys, you know, throughout the course of that, that two, you know, three year run after, you know, our class left and just how proud I was because I knew you guys, not only as athletes, but I knew you as people and just how great of human beings you were and how easy it was for me to just be tremendously happy uh, for you guys having, you know, no part of those teams whatsoever, but somehow feeling like, you know, we, we played a part of, you know, that legacy, so to speak. Um, and, and, you know, that's probably, honestly, my fondest memory doesn't even come from being on the team and wearing the jersey. It's those years after that you guys basically took the torch and just absolutely set the world on fire. Uh, to add to that, you know, I think what I'm most proud of now is when I look at the Morningside teams now and I feel like, you know, we have a little part of that, of, of where they're at right now. And we were able to, you know, build year after year after year. Um, and, you know, Morningside is, seems like they're always nationally ranked now. And it, it wasn't always that way. It was, uh, we fought to uh, earn that, you know, we went from, I wrote it down, we went from 10 wins to 18 to 20 to 28 wins. And we just built every single year. And, you know, I think that uh, we have a, a small part in where Morningside's at right now. Yeah, you know, I went back through. Uh, I went back through the uh, the 2003. It's the, the prior year to winning the conference conference tournament, and uh, um, obviously there was. Uh, you know, that was. Uh, I really enjoyed being a part of that of that squad. You know, being at, being at Morningside because it had been a D2 school before. I look back, and you guys have highlighted this in your videos, McGill. You know, a couple years later, you guys beat South Dakota and South Dakota State on the road, both D2 teams. I mean. We played that year, the year before the conference tournament, we played eight Division II teams. We beat a couple of them. We played Kearney, Northern State, and UNO, who were all top ten. And we had, again, like you said, a few holdovers in myself, Roush, Coop, as older upperclassmen, and then a number of freshmen. And uh, the other non-conference games we played were against Evangel, who was a returning national champion, Buena Vista, who was a D3, uh, D3 national tournament team, and then the upper end of the GPAC. So it wasn't like uh, as freshmen, you guys were coming into uh, a, a cupcake schedule by any means. Tie back into what Coop was saying, you know, just uh, 
you know, the whole leadership that you guys provided, man. I mean, that was, I mean, invaluable for all of us young guys, you know, and, um, you know, I've kind of had those characteristics. Obviously, I coach college basketball to this day and have been involved with the game for a very long time. But, you know, I think those building blocks were set by you guys, you know, those upperclassmen that me and Paul had when we were first coming up. And, you know, I mean, I had obviously had a, a monster ego when I was playing and stuff. But, you know, I think all of us as athletes and young guys, we, we have that. You know, I see that in my guys today. And the best teams are able to balance those egos, um, you know, with their off-court camaraderie, their their on-court chemistry, you know, all those type of things. And, you know, and I, I what's cool, kind of what's Coop saying, you know, is how all of our relationships together have evolved differently, you know, and, you know, some guys are, are closer with each other than other guys. And, you know, I have even new relationships with guys that played after me, and, you know, with, you know, obviously with Craig Doty and, but even like Greg Nelson, who I wasn't that tight with in college. And, and now I'm, I'm really close to him. Him, you know so just those lifelong bonds and relationships that Morningside set and you know obviously that comes from battles man you know the, all the preseason stuff the you know the, the cost the costume thing we would do on the, the last day of preseason and and just that that whole build up and you know those th those things you know those stick out more than any specific memory as far as basketball goes and you know, that's – I even reflect on that as a coach now. You look at the course of a season, and it's not one particular game or one moment. It's kind of the the body of, of guys and, and what we went through. And that's just what I value from my time at Morningside and with you guys especially. Um, you know, Brad's perspective on, um, like, that time we were um, – we were coming home on a charter bus, and we had won, and Brad went to the bathroom in the back of the bus. And um, – Coop convinced Brad that he was locked in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> and Brad began to panic. And um, so, you know, Coop's talking about how nice he was to us, but um, how, how did you feel when you felt like you were locked in the back um, of the bus bathroom? I, I'm pretty sure my quote was just my luck. I got stuck in the <laughs> shitter. <laughs> staring out, on, staring out at, uh, what is it? I 29 there, right between Omaha and, and Sioux city, man. <laughs> And I'm not sure that Coop was behind that, but I, from memory, he was. I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it, Brad. I was probably the one saying, guys, just let him out of the bathroom. <laughs> Roush, how you about you, man? Future, well, uh, future Mustang, memory. maybe. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I mean, from a memory perspective, it's really hard to pull out specific games or anything like that. I mean, that's as I was, it was, we were talking about doing this particular meeting, I was think, trying to think back on the season, or at least that 03, 04 season, and coming up with specific memories of about the games themselves was really difficult. I don't really remember, you know, I remember, for and I, I told you guys this, I remember Brad going off in, at Concordia, and I remember Eddie Caesar being really good. Uh, <laughs> I, remember, I remember Paul having some really big scoring games. I remember... You know, Tommy Reagan having some big rebound games. But I don't – I mean, I couldn't tell you, like, oh, yeah, remember that one play we ran that, you know, I, I set that pick or, you know, Coop dribbled and passed it to – I don't remember any of that. But what I do remember is a lot of the preseason workouts. I remember a lot of that. Um, I remember a lot of the team meals. Uh, I remember a lot of the, uh, you know, gather, social gatherings we would have. Uh, whether it was in the in our apartment, our six man apartment, or uh, at somebody's house, or that uh, six. Yeah. By the way, that six man apartment was legendary, bro. Legendary. <laughs> I was just thinking about that the other day. This the the dynamics of six guys. The first year in that place, the the the, the walkway down to the soccer guys where Tom was living with. And, yeah, man. Anyway, sorry, Mark. I didn't want to break up your thoughts, but yeah, I was thinking about that last night too, man. I was just like, that was so epic, man. I just want to, I just want to say to that to that end, and the girls agreed. You were at Disney at that time, right, Jeff? I was, and I came back. I can talk about that a little bit. I came back that mid semester, but I will say that uh, the girls are in agreement that uh, the the social aspect that we brought to the table was legendary. And it can never be, uh, never be duplicated. And that comes from the girls team. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was such a unique living environment because of the, that walkway down. It was, I mean, we called a six man apartment. It was really a 12 man apartment. It was just, but anyway, so that, that's the kind of stuff that I remember though. I don't remember, you know, how many points I got or rebounds or anything like that, but just 
you know, I, re I do remember quite a few of the, the parties we would get get involved with or some of the, the special nights that we would have or the, definitely the preseason workouts. I mean, a lot of that stuff sticks out in my mind a lot more than the results of the season. Although winning the conference title was, I mean, that was really fun. Cause, and I don't know that that was, you know, I want everybody to be, to be aware that the season before, so my freshman year and sophomore year, we were part of a conference. My junior year, which is Brad and Paul's freshman year, we were not in a conference. We were an independent. It was really a weird season. Um, you know, the record wasn't that great, but just the different teams we were playing, it, it was kind of like you weren't really playing for anything other than, hey, there was this random NAIA independent tournament in Philadelphia, which is really cool to go to. And it was, you know, I was an experience in and of itself. And like you had said, Jeff, but to have a conference again that senior year was awesome. I loved playing in the conference and having something to play for every night. Uh, and then, of course, being picked 13th or whatever we were, 12th. And then to win it was just awesome. That part, that part was definitely I – I do remember that, not, that feeling at Concordia when we had locked up a share of it. It was fun. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, In here, uh, I'm, I'm trying uh, to uh, – you don't remember playing at Sioux Falls and scoring 28 points and having nine boards? I don't. On the, on the 28th <laughs> of January? <laughs> you know but i think that guys like really goes back to i can you know remember and, and some of you guys are coaches now being in a locker room and, and saying you know i don't know that i can look back and i can give you like my season records you know how how many games i won in in uh different seasons or you know there's a couple games that stand out where like i did something you know there's a game against uh a dana uh, uh, maybe my sophomore year or whatever, where I went off and had more points than I've ever had. It wasn't like a big score. So I remember some of that stuff, but the majority of the stuff that I remember are like being on the bus, free, being in the, you know, the Roush, the preseason workouts, you know, running, you know, up that damn hill, thinking to myself on the way down, if I fall and scrape my face up, maybe they'll let me go to the training room. You know, um, those are the things that, that I remember as well. I'm not so sure that I can, you know, I remember Brad going off in, in the Concordia game, but I don't remember those specifics really so much as, you know, those other memories. And as a coach, you know, tell my players the same thing. I mean, you're not, you're not, you remember how hard you worked. You remember what your mindset was. You remember, you know, as, as, you know, Brad said, you know, that F you mentality or, you know, having that ass kicking mentality when, when you go in, I don't really remember the outcome so much, but that also, I think us remembering those things is why we are who we are today and why we are successful in our individual crafts is because we are all, we all display a little bit of humility in that Roush can't just say, yeah, I remember that time I had 28 points and nine rebounds on January 18th against, you know, <laughs> no, no, that was a fact, <laughs> That's right. But the fact that, you know, he does remember, man, I remember working really hard in, in preseason and, and we all knew that preseason, it sucked, but we knew it was important because we had to be ready to go game one. We wanted to be in shape. We wanted to be physically ready. So I think that speak wonders to, you know, who you guys are um, today. Hey, so I will say this, Coop. I do remember that game you went off and it, you had 35 and you had 32 with about 15 seconds to go. Game was over. You were standing two feet in front of the three-point line, and Terry Foister yelled out, if you get to 35, the entire team gets free Jerry's pizza. And you shot a 35-foot three, and it went in with three seconds to go. I'd and still make a 35-footer for Jerry's pizza today. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. No, and I, uh, you know, to reiterate. Hey, really, really, really quick, well, who, does anybody remember the name of the restaurant that our meal plan was at over winter break? Or uh, that's Oh, no, yeah. Tim was it Timothy's? Timothy's. 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 That's where we couldn't eat in the, in, the co in the cafeteria, so we had like a <laughs> meal. We had like $12 at Timothy's. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For, 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 hey, I, for day, yeah. A funny memory that I can actually share that happened in a game was, I think in that 04 year, we, we went to Hastings. And that arena at Hastings was pretty new. It was beautiful. And we just mopped the floor with Hastings, I think we were probably up, we won by 47 points, but I think we were up by about 30 or 40 at halftime. And we're all sitting there proud of ourselves. And 
uh, the coach comes in and says, well, guys, I, I think they're going to make some adjustments. And I start laughing because like, <laughs> of course, they're going to make some adjustments. So we're whipping there by 30 or 40 points. And then I got a stern talking to after that. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I do remember that, um, you know, getting in trouble being up by 30 or 40 points because yeah, they're, they're going to make some adjustments. The court board. And then the court board. I mean, like, that would, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll push under court and we'll have to go through the court board here. I've been, uh, I've been <laughs> writing down just as I talk to you guys, memories that aren't appropriate for this uh, media cycle here that maybe when we push stop, we can revisit. But you guys remember when uh, it was like the first time I ever saw Sykes mad uh, when God, I don't even remember what we did, but we were standing on the sideline getting ready to run and we someone didn't make it or something and he took the ball rack and I think he meant to like throw it down like tip it over and he threw it and it like stayed up and was like teeter-tottering down like went into the, the hallway anybody remember that and like everyone busts out laughing and he just left <laughs> <laughs> One thing I talked to the girls team about too was uh, just how important, obviously, Brad, you being a, a, a college coach, how important culture is and what culture you bring and how some of the uh, upperclassmen uh, are, are leaders in that culture. And obviously you went through a, you know, a, a challenging transition, you know, Brad and, and McGill um, kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the culture coming in uh, with, with the with the upperclassmen, you know, when you came in as, a, as recruits, I mean, obviously, McGill, um, you coming from Colorado, unique perspective. A lot of the kids, people on the team are from Iowa. What was it like to come in and kind of what kind of uh, a feeling of culture did some of the upper, upperclassmen give? Definitely unique. Um, when I was being recruited, you know, they, they kind of explained to me, uh, at the time, I was being recruited by uh, Bob Bargan and Jim Sykes. And uh, so their pitch to me was, you know, we're going through this transition. Um, a lot of guys have left um, when we're transitioning from Division Two to NAIA. And, you know, you have an opportunity to play right away. Um, but what I don't think I understood when I first got there was we already had um, good leadership in place, um, you know, with some of uh, – with Coop and – with Roush, we had leaders on the team, but, um, you know, we had quite a few freshmen. I was playing, uh, Brad was playing, Tom. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I think what surprised me is, although the record the year before we got there wasn't uh, the best, um, there, there was still a lot of leadership on the team. You know, how do, you know, as you, as you, as everyone continued to mesh and, and gel together, and become, you know, what I'd say, great friends, really in a, in a one-year time period in that, in that 03 season. The next year with all those experiences, I mean, you know, Brad had dropped 35 already at Dana's freshman year. He hit 10 threes, right? I mean, you guys are playing playing right away. How do you think, you know, all of that, and, and Cooper House, you can talk, to, talk about it as well, just kind of all the adversity of those few years before leading into then a 2004 season, which was epically successful, you know, how did that prepare you guys for that season? You know, year so uh, oh two oh three. It was uh, I I don't know. I guess I don't want to speak for the other guys, but I was just kind of happy to be playing college basketball. You know, just not really knowing what to expect. And you know, I think going into that oh four year, um, we had a change in mindset um, mm -hmm. really and. Um, rather than wanting to win, we were expecting to win at that time. Um, we had, you know, full year under our belt and, um, you know, it's just expectations changed and, um, just tying to that culture stuff, you know, as far as I feel like, uh, you know, when me and, and PMAC and all those, you know, 22 freshmen, I think, or something crazy like that step foot on campus, you know, you guys, uh, primarily, you know, Mark and Dustin and you, Jeff and, and, and grow, you guys just kind of you know, assimilate us into your guys' group of friends, you know, and got us acclimated to the campus culture and just Sioux City in general, which, you know, reflecting back as a, as a young student athlete, now being a college coach, how, how important those off-court bonds are and, and how that translates over to wins and losses. And, you know, going from 10 and 22 that first year, and we were all hooping together. And, you know, Carlson, you referenced that, you know, the, the, independent tournament out in Philadelphia and just having that experience of even playing in the postseason as freshmen was 
was pretty dope considering, you know, we weren't very good, but we had still had that chance to make the national tournament. And then, you know, just kind of hit on what McGill said. You know, I think we came in that second year and we just kind of had a chip on our shoulder. We'd all played together for a year. We had a ton of experience. We were still relatively young on paper, but, you know, the talent was there, the buy-in was there, and, uh, you know, the culture, you know, was was getting better on a daily basis. And that started just with us hanging out in your guys' apartments and stuff when we were freshmen and and going over to, uh, was it uh, Bryce Roth and Florky's house? Or, or, Jeff's house I think with those guys back in the day so it's uh all that all that stuff paid huge dividends as far as on the court from my perspective yeah you know one thing too that I think that you know I I hate when people ask me you know to compare you know playing on the the division two Morningside team and the the NAI team because I think what a lot of a lot of people don't realize is how good a basketball is being played at the NAI level. Um, and, and how, you know, and I guess the only one on here that's a college coach at this point is Brad, maybe can speak to this a little bit, but just the, the, the paper thin separation that there is uh, between that upper echelon of NAI schools and, and division two, and really even division one uh, for, for that matter, you know, there are many, we can all give many examples of, you know, our, our Morningside team uh, that Jeff alluded to going into, you know, play Iowa State and take them into triple overtime. But how many, you know, Division uh, two D1 teams that you guys hung in and, and, and even beat uh, after we left? I mean, that just goes to show you, you know, the talent that we did have uh, in that gym. But not only that, I think this, the, the level of character uh, and just good dudes that we had on that team that we all got along, you know, and when there were arguments, it was squashed, you know, very, very quickly. Um, and we were all, all ready to go to battle for each other. At least, I, I mean, I know I, I would have had your guys' back uh, in, in the dark alley every single day, twice on Friday night. Uh, Paul sometimes had to. But um, <laughs> just that, again, that bond that, that we have. But I hate that comparison because I, I would venture to say that, that you know, that 4 team, we could have, we did play a, a difficult schedule, but we could have made it an even more difficult schedule and probably won some of those games. I truly believe that in my heart. Well, you know, when we're talking about college and somebody asks me, well, where did you play college basketball? Um, and I, I say, well, Morningside College, they're an NAIA team. And a lot of people in Colorado, um, you know, have, haven't heard of Morningside um, and, I don't think they understand, you know, we went into South Dakota State when they were ranked, I think, sixth in the sixth in the country for NCAA Division II. We beat them. We went into South Dakota. Um, South, I'm sorry, South Dakota is when they were ranked sixth in the country. You're editing this, right, Carlson? Um, <laughs> and <sure>. uh, <laughs> we, we went up to South Dakota State when they were uh, transitioning, and they were going to be a Division I program, and we knocked them off. And we flew over to Chaminade and we played Chaminade close over in Hawaii um, the entire game. And there is just, you know, very little difference. And um, it's more of a height difference than anything. When you go play the division one teams and the top division two teams, they're all six, 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 eight. And we're just little morning side, but you know, skill wise, we could, we could hang with all those guys. Okay. So you're, you know, rolling through the year um, and you know, I want to get to this Concordia game because I think it's like uh, it's a, it's just an interesting microcosm, really, of just the grit that I think that all of you guys played with, and and just the toughness and your mindset. But you're going in, you know that you have an opportunity to win the conference championship game. Um, take us through the Concordia game um, and the mindset going in. What was uh, what was the team's mindset? Because that was really that was really it in regards to winning that conference title. Well, Brad, Brad's it. hand is still on fire, so why don't you go ahead and <laughs> uh, – You know, I just – kind of like what McGill was saying, you know, I think uh, – I mean, early in our careers, I mean, I just had this naive mindset, man, and just, uh, you know, just kind of not really to – part of my French, a little FU mentality of just, you know, I don't think anybody really cared for us. We were picked 12th out of 13 teams as our first year in the GPAC. I mean, we went, you know, 10-22 the previous season. And, you know, I just uh, – I, I think all of us kind of just bonded together. I think with any game we went into, we just 
expected to win. Uh, we didn't care who we were playing. And, you know, heading into that last game, obviously at Concordia, this is when Concordia was kind of in their heyday of having some, you know, four or five good year stretch too. And, you know, staring down 18, I think with, you know, eight or nine minutes left in the game, um, you know, as a, co as a coach now on the sidelines, I'm sitting there and, you know, you basically – wrap that thing up, game's over. And, you know, we just kept battling back and battling back. And, you know, I think I, – I, I don't recall all the plays, but, you know, obviously Eddie Caesar had a big impact on the outcome of that game. And, um, you know, it's just – it was surreal, you know, getting getting done with that and realizing that we went 14-4 and four in, in, in conference and tied for first and got screwed from the national tournament like we did uh, the following season as well. But uh, nonetheless, it was – I think it was kind of the springboard to – get Morningside men's basketball back on the map and on the radar of, uh, you know, people in Sioux City and just people in that geographical area. And it's surreal reflecting on it for sure. Season two was, uh, it wasn't an easy season, you know, the entire way through. There was, uh, we had a coaching change at the beginning of that season. Uh, Coach Schmuddy took over and then he had health issues. And so then we had, um, Coach Sykes and Coach Mankey and um, you know there were there were games where we weren't even exactly sure who was going to be our head coach and so you know we did go through some adversity and um, you know I was looking back at some box scores kind of getting ready for this call and um, you know we had won five straight conference games going into Concordia so it wasn't like we were in the driver's seat the whole the whole year we had to win six straight conference games to win that conference championship um, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't easy that whole season, but we came on really strong at the end and, um, did get screwed, not getting the national attorney invite. I mean, you're supposed to finish strong and build your resume, but, um, it's okay. I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say, I mean, to, to close here and I'd like to keep you guys on here. I'm going to stop recording, but, um, Man, I just I just appreciate all of you. I think it's uh, I think it's been so awesome to see all of your families grow. I think it's been incredible to see um, where everyone's gone with their life. And maybe that maybe that that Philadelphia tournament sticks out to me because I see the, the all the girls and, and the men's team that should traveled there, and then where everybody's at after that. And it's incredible to see the success of like that entire group of of friends that were really really close. And I think that it's awesome. And it's just. It's just cool to see uh, see where you guys are at. So, I mean, I really appreciate you uh, doing this and, and joining us here, and hopefully we can get off and uh, we'll talk a little bit more. But uh, no, I just appreciate you guys. Thanks, Carlson. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yep, thanks. Yes.